So we're going to look at equations where there's variables on both sides, meaning there's letters like x's on both sides of the equal sign. Um, our aim is still to get x by itself, so one thing that we have to do is get all of the x's to one side of the equation, combine them together using like terms, and put the numbers on the other side, and then break apart the number with the x. So it's really important to show all our work in here. And we're going to still be using the opposites. So what I'm going to look at first is thinking about moving the terms of the variables to one side and the terms that are just the numbers to the other side of the equation. And it doesn't matter if you go left or right, but out of habit a lot of people will put the variable on the left hand side and the numbers on the right hand side. But it doesn't really matter. So, our first equation here, 5x minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 7. So I might think about putting the numbers on this side of the equation and get the x's on the other side of the equation. So my first step here would be plus 4, plus 4 to both sides because that minus 4, if I plus 4, that's the opposite, it'll cancel it, but I need to do that to both sides. So the next line of my working would be 5x minus 4 plus 4 cancel. So I'm left with 2x and then 4 plus 7 is 11. Now I want to get this 2x to the other side of the equation. So if I have a 2x there, I want to ask myself, is that a positive 2x or a negative 2x? And since there's no sign in front of it, I'm going to assume it's positive. So the opposite of a positive 2x would be a minus 2x. So if I subtract 2x from either side of the equation, I get, in this case, 5x minus 2x is equal to 3x. 2x minus 2x cancel each other out, so I'm left with just the 11. And as my last step here, I need to think about getting this 3 times x broken apart. So the opposite of timesing by 3 would be then to divide by 3. And I'll need to do that to both sides of the equation. So 3 divided by 3, they cancel. I'm left with just the x. And I'm left with 11 divided by 3. Now I can leave that as the fraction, 11 over 3. Or you can write it out if you want. Um, as 3 and 2 thirds, or you can put it into a decimal as 3.66 repeating. Any of those three answers will work. As a habit, I often just leave it as a fraction like 11 over 3. Okay, so again, same idea here. I've got x's on both sides of the equation. I want to think about moving all the x's to one side and all the numbers to the other side. So my first step here might be to move the number to the other side of the equation. That's a 16 and I notice that it's positive because there's nothing in front of it. So the opposite of positive 16 would be minusing 16. So if I minus 16 from both sides of the equation, 16 minus 16 cancel. I'm left with 3x is equal to 6 minus 16 gets me to negative 10. Again, 6 take away a really big negative number gets me to negative 10. I still have the plus x over there. For my next step, I want to think about getting all the x's on one side of the equation. So positive x here, remember that's a 1x. If I want minus x on that side and minus x on this side, let me write that a bit neater, minus x my equal sign in the middle. Plus x minus x cancel, so I'm left with negative 10. And 3x minus x, which is 3x minus 1x, remember the little invisible one there, leaves me with 2x. So, if I want to try to solve for x now, I need to think about breaking apart that 2, and that's 2 times x, so the opposite of that would be to divide by 2 divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 leaves me with x, and negative 10 divided by 2 leaves me with negative 5. Remember, a negative divided by a positive will give you the negative, so 10 divided by 2 is 5, and there's still the negative. Okay. So it might be a good idea for you to pause these, pause and try to solve these ones on your own and see how you go, just to test your knowledge.
2a minus 5 is equal to 7a plus 10. I'm going to think about moving things from one side to the other to the other. I'm going to get all the a's on one side and all the numbers on the other side. And actually I'm going to do it differently. I've moved the numbers to the right every time, but this time I'm going to look at it and see that the 2a is smaller than the 7a, so I might actually move the 2a over here to join the bigger number. So the first thing I'll do then is try and move the 10 to the other side. So the opposite of plus 10 is going to be minus 10. So I'm going to do minus 10 to both sides. Minus 5 minus 10, that's going to be a total of negative 15. There's still the 2a, and this is now equal to 7a because plus 10 minus 10 cancel. My next step here, I need to get that 2a to the other side, and you'll look, there's no sign in front, so I'm going to assume that's a positive 2a. So the opposite of doing that would be to say take away 2a and take away 2a. So 2a minus 2a cancel, I'm left with negative 15 is equal to 7a minus 2a. 7 minus 2 is going to be 5a. And my last step here, I have 5 times a, so I'm going to divide by 5 and divide by 5. That's going to leave me with a is equal to negative 15 divided by 5 is going to be negative 3. And it's okay, I can say negative 3 is equal to a. I can also rewrite that as a is equal to negative 3. It doesn't really matter. It's kind of a fun thing about equations is that you can pick up everything on the right hand side and put it on the left hand side if you want and flop it back and forth. It'll still say the same thing. Alright, last example. Expanding out the brackets here first because I have to deal with the brackets, so dealing with that quickly. Timesing the 4 through, I get 4y minus 20, watching the negative there, is equal to 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times plus y is plus 2y. So, moving things from one side to the next, I might decide to move the negative 20 to the other side, and to cancel that out, I'm going to have to go plus 20, plus 20 to both sides. So this becomes 4y, negative 20 plus 20 cancel, and I get 6 plus 20 is 26 plus 2y. My next step to get the 2y to the other side would be to go minus 2y, minus 2y on both sides, because the opposite of plus 2y is minus 2y. And now combining terms, 4 minus 2 is going to be 2y is equal to 26, because these two cancel. My last step would be to divide by 2 on both sides. So y is equal to 13, because the 2 and the 2 cancel there. I'm left with y is equal to 26 divided by 2, which is 13. So again, when you've got equations with x's on both sides, it doesn't matter if you move them to the left or right, but you want to get everything with x on one side and all the numbers on the other side first, and then think about getting x by itself and breaking apart whatever it's times or divided by.